Merci beaucoup, Votre Excellence. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for those words. I would now like to call on His Excellency Yari Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, to give some remarks. You're welcome, Your Excellency. His Excellency William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, the Chairperson of the African Union, President of Mauritania, and their Excellencies, the Heads of State and the Government. This is a topic I can speak on for the whole day. I'm therefore glad we have had this meeting where the presidents of Africa meet with some of the Western leaders. I was the crisis which is in Africa today is because of philosophical, ideological, strategic, economic mistakes, which we have been talking about since the 1960s. This is not an accident. When you see the crisis in many of the African countries, the, the collapse of states. We predicted this in the 1960s. Philosophical, ideological, strategic mistakes. I don't have time to uh, amplify each one. But I was very happy here the president of the World Bank talking about prosperity instead of profiteering. These were his own words. That's what I picked. This has been the problem. Aid has been for profiteering. This has been the problem. Now, the World Bank people and other groups have been talking of sustainable development. <clears throat> Even in your documents, I have seen that, those words there, sustainable development. I am not going to be 80 years old. I have never seen sustainable pregnancy that the woman is pregnant this year the pregnancy continues next year three years, four years it never happens in life pregnancy develops sustainably within the womb of the, of the, of the, of the woman Quantitatively, the baby is growing bigger and bigger. But at some stage, quantitative growth must be transformed into qualitative change. The pregnancy must become a baby. If the pregnancy remains pregnancy, the fetus will die. So therefore, I would even ask you to change those words in your documents. Africa does not need sustainable what? You could call it sustainable underdevelopment. Africa needs social economic transformation. The pregnancy must become a baby. 
the baby must grow and grow and become a teenager. The teenager must grow. That's what happens in life. You cannot have quantitative growth and you think you are doing anything. The, the main reason why there is no growth is because the growth factors are not funded. They are not even understood. What are the growth, growth factors? We now talk of private sector aid growth. Yes, but for the private sector to grow, what does it need? It needs low cost of production. Ministers of Finance, low costs of production. And what are the low costs of production? Number one, transport. You must have low transport costs. Where do low transport costs come from? From the railway. If you don't find the railway, how will you get low transport costs? Wonderful people, Banco Mundial, IMF, all these. Where will low cost operation come from if you don't have a railway? I have been here for the last 64 years. I've been watching as a student leader, as a freedom fighter, now as the leader of a country. How many railways have been constructed or funded in Africa? The few that have been was by China, the Tanzania Railway to Zambia, and recently China, another one here in Kenya, and then Tanzania on their own, they are building a railway line. So if you are talking of helping Africa, the railway, I don't want to be involved in any other what words, 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 no, please. The railway. Because if you, trans, you, you find the railway, you will have low cost of transport, and you can, you can produce products which are cheap, which can be bought in the world. So you audit how much funding all these billions you are talking about. How, how much of, of it has gone to the railway? Audit it. The second cost pusher is electricity. If you don't find electricity and you talk about uh, sustainable development, what, what are you talking about? Private sector aid growth. Maneno too. Huh? Electricity, we must have low cost electricity, not exceeding five cents per kilowatt hour. That's what I insist on in Uganda. I'm tired of all these stories. These new colonial civil servants who have been holding us back, I have put my foot down, say I don't want to hear those stories. And Uganda is developing and it will develop because I don't entertain that nonsense anymore. Borrowing for what? Capacity building. Imagine. Seminars. They, they, they call you in a, in a hotel. You eat chapati. You eat mandazi. They say that is capacity building. Capacity building should be on the ground, not just seminars. So, the second point, excellence, is electricity. The third one, those people who talk about private sector aid growth, private sector aid growth. I have been trying to borrow money for our UDB, Uganda Development Bank, a bank which funds manufacturers. No, 
you don't, I don't get support for that. Instead, they want me to go, my people to go to commercial banks. But commercial banks cannot give, no, those commercial banks are to encourage imports. Are to encourage imports. Because the only person who can borrow money and pay it back from a commercial bank is a trader who goes to China, goes to where, Dubai, brings products, sells them quickly and pays back. So, if you are serious, I need to hear about the low cost funding for manufacturing. Not for stories, not for what, 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 no manufacturing. The, how about funding for irrigation? Because if you want to stabilize agriculture, a country like Uganda is very rich, we've got everything. But still sometimes we get some, some erraticness in the rain. So in order to stabilize, I've been trying to look for a, a loan for irrigation. I can't easily get it. Very difficult to get. A loan for seminars, very quick. The civil servants, what? Oh, oh, oh. But a loan for irrigation, you don't see. Uh -huh. Now finally, the loan for, I don't know the situation in other African countries, and I don't have time to talk for a long, I don't have, don't have opportunity to talk for long. But Uganda is a very rich country. But one of the problems we are having was that our people were outside the money economy. They were in what they call subsistence sector. They just produce for eating, produce for eating, produce for eating. One of one two two. So I was looking for money. Please give me money to give coffee seedlings to these fellows who are just producing for the stomach, so that they can produce for the stomach but also produce for the pocket, so that they join the money economy. You cannot imagine that by 2013, 20, a few years ago, 68% of the homesteads in Uganda were still in the subsistence sector, in the non-money economy. You audit your countries. What is the situation? What is the percentage of the people? So I had now to use my own money because I couldn't get, I couldn't borrow money from anybody. The, the loans are for capacity building for. I don't know. Sometimes they give for ICT. But ICT, ICT is a communication system, mainly. What are you going to communicate on that communication? How are you? Good morning. And you think that is communication. Why don't you have ICT linked with agriculture? Linked with industry? Oh, now the digital, digital, digital. Are you eating computers? Have I seen anybody eating computers? Just running up and down. Maneno too. So I was insisting that all these Ugandans must be in the money economy. 2013, not, not long ago, 68% of Ugandans were outside the money economy because Uganda is a very rich country. A fool can survive there. In other countries, fools die. But in Uganda, fools can strive there. They just eat. You, they, 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 he stays with his, his, his brothers. He eats. He goes from there to the, to the sister. He eats. 
is not earning anything, but he's eating. So we said, no, everybody must be involved in the, in the money economy. We couldn't, we couldn't get any support for that. But we funded it ourselves. Each year, we spend about $300 million of our own to, to, to make these villagers join the money economy by producing for the, for, the, for the stomach, but also for the pocket. And from 2013, I was now told that for the first time, 61% uh, of the people are in the money economy, of the homesteads. It is only 39% that are still out. You imagine those are still there, just eating, no, no money. So therefore, this meeting is, then you, you get your, your neo-colonial civil servants, they talk of import support. Imagine there is money for import support. Import support, import support. Uh -huh. The governor writes to me, reports, we have got import cover for so many months. But I don't want to import, I want to export. Why don't you tell me about import substitution and export promotion? Instead you are telling me of import support. Money, so money is available for him to, to, to become more dependent. So, so I'm, I'm very glad to hear what the, now finally, the cars which we told our people about in the 1960s, we told them part of the wars we fought in Uganda were to get rid of the neo-colonial groups which were there, which were stopping us from thinking. We had to get rid of them by force. But one of the problems was Africa producing raw materials. Materiel primaire, they call it in Francais. Materiel primaire. Raw materials. Imagine coffee. The global value of coffee is $460 billion. All the coffee producing countries of the world, Brazil, us, all this, we only get 25 billion of that. Out of the 460 billion, Af uh, the, the, the coffee producing countries get 25 billion. And Africa gets only 2.5 billion. 900 million of that comes to Uganda because Uganda produces a lot of coffee. A country like, like uh, Germany, which has no coffee, earns $65 billion from coffee. So, this, this, I sell a kilo of coffee, good, good grade coffee, $2.5. Somebody in London would get $241 from that one kilo. Okay, there are, there are other costs on the way. I don't want, I don't want to, because he has, he's, the, he's the owner of a restaurant and so on. But coffee roasting, coffee roasting, coffee grinding, coffee packing must happen here in Africa. It must happen at source. The shirt I'm putting on is Ugandan cotton. I don't put on foreign clothes. It's only the trousers I'm putting on because I can't go naked. Because they have not solved that problem for me. So, if you look at, co at, at cotton, how many job levels are there? Job levels. You grow the cotton. Okay, that, that one we do. Those, those jobs we do. 
we gin, gin the cotton, remove, remove the seeds. That's what we do here. And we end there. When you hear all these countries which have got crisis, Burkina Faso, I don't know what, Mali, all of them are cotton growing countries. But how much textiles are they producing? They are importing textiles, I don't know from where. So, now, if you end at level two, ginning, removing the seeds, then you take the pamba, you take the cotton, to clever people, people who are clever. What were in your kid? Wako huko? She's up to Tajita VP. Come, Mutta Nakuzida, Kiri, one as on a similar way when none. So, they take the, the cotton, they spin, spinning more money, more jobs for their children. They weave more money, more jobs for their children. They put the, the print, more money, more jobs for their children. The, I, I, I looked at uh, the figures. Uganda consumes 276 million meters of textiles each year. And that wonderful country of yours spends 880 million dollars on, on clothes. Some of them dead people's clothes from Europe. When people die, they are clothes they are sent to, to you people, to Africa. And we spend 800, all the money we earn from coffee goes back to bring dead people's clothes. But for, we have got one factory there called, called Nitir. It, 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 it produces 25 million liters, uh, million meters. So in order to clothe our people in Uganda, without importing, we need about 11 factories, like the one of 90. And they would, uh, they would employ about 20,000 people. So there, and we would save $880 million, which we are just giving to other people. So, this uh, Aida, what did you say? about the modern slavery of the Africans of producing raw materials. In one of our documents in, in, in Addis Ababa, we had talked of Africa producing what it does not consume and consuming what it does not produce. They, they had put that uh, as a summary in, in one of the documents of the African Union. We must get rid of the production of raw. I banned the export of minerals from Uganda and process I banned them. Then the agents were going in the corridors. What Mufaji, no mineral will come from Uganda if it's not processed. You wait until I, 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 I go away, you can steal the minerals, but not now. I banned this export of unprocessed minerals in 2012. My, my young brother, his excellency Ruto, I forgave him and gave him some, some little iron ore for, I think, two or three years. Because I've got a lot of iron ore, one of the best in the world. I told him, his Excellency Ruto's man, Muindi, Muindi Wahapa, Kenya. You come and build the steel factory in Uganda at, 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 the, at the iron ore. Oh, yeah. I've, already, I've already built in Mombasa. So I said, okay, because of my young friend, I give you some iron ore for two, I think two or three years. But come and put the factory here. Now you can imagine Akiria Yawatwenu, my civil servants, 
an Indian wanted to take that iron ore to India, imagine. Iron ore in, in our language is called obtare, but it is, it is uh, soil, soil, black soil, if you see it, it is soil. To take that to India and do what? Pay your wonderful people $47 per ton. Our iron ore is the purest in the world. It is 70% pure. So you need like one and a half tons to make a ton of steel. Now, a ton of steel costs $700. Somebody gives you $47 on your, on your, on your wealth, the wealth of, 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 of your people, and he gets $700 from it. And all the jobs, your children have no, have no jobs, I, I can't be part of that treachery. So I banned, there will be no export of unprocessed minerals from Uganda. So there's no business. What do you mean there's no business? So when I banned them, they are flocking in now. They have opened seven gold refineries. Seven gold refineries. They are there. Because I banned. Uh -huh. The other day I was opening a tin, a tin re refinery. You can imagine this tin, and uh, the, the Suru Samia may know where we were, the power station, both sides, the Uganda side and the Tanzanian side. That is all tin, tin. But all this time, imagine, since the, the British were here, they were taking, were going to go my way to stones. Because tin in nature is a stone, looks like a stone. So they take that. And they give my people $11 per kilo. And they take it to, to cleverer people. For the cleverer people, they get $32. My people got 11 those people get $32. And all the jobs. So when I was opening the factory, I was asking the, the, the refinery, I was asking them, this boy who, who opened the refinery is a Canadian. I was asking them, we in Canada, America umemewake, has this Canadian brought his own electricity? No. Anatomia umemewakwetu. Uh-huh. Ameleta maji yake ya factory? No. Anatumia maji yetu. Internet, anatumia ya nani? Ya kwetu. The... So, out of the 32 dollars, much of, of that money will remain in Uganda. Pay for the raw material, pay for the electricity, pay for the water, all that remains in Uganda. So, what does, first of all, my African brothers and sisters say about this hemorrhage of Africa? Hemorrhage. Echukurukuto, we call it in Uganda. This hemorrhage must stop. The crisis you see in these countries is because of stag stagnation of the last 60 years since independence. The population is increasing. The economies are not increasing. What do you expect? So with these few words, Your Excellencies, what do I say? Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, President Yaru Museveni. May I call upon His Excellency Professor Faustine Ashang Tuadara, President of the Central African Republic, to please come and give some remarks. 
Bienvenue.